Look at that view in upper camera. Yeah. So as far as we know, are we the first people to, to lay eyes on the ship since it went down? To our knowledge. That's that is a very right. special moment. So are we kind of midship? If that is indeed the bow on the starboard side of Hercules, then we're a midship but slightly forward. Yeah. What do you think about that, Hiroshi? Are you seeing anything that would kind of so give an identity a as a Japanese vessel versus a U.S. It, it has a two turrets in, you know, in bow. That is not a Yugumo cross. Yeah. Oh, I have the bow pro. Is that a thank you dual cannon? Follow? No, that's a, they're both dual cannon turrets. I see both guns now in the first. I don't think it's an Asashio. Let's see. Are we at the bow or the stern? Yeah, this is a bow. We're still really unclear as to which ship this is. A lot of folks in the chat are excited that it could be the IJN Terazuki. Can't say for certain yet. Maybe we get some more information in the wreckage. So how did you find this? What was the story here? So our shoreside team with the Drake's uncrewed surface vessel was mapping throughout the Iron Bottom Sound for potentially unidentified shipwrecks or other targets on the seafloor. So this was mapped just in the last day or two, and it sure is a shipwreck. So that just shows and speaks to the collaboration of our shoreside team and kind of the capabilities of doing multiple different operations with our vehicles and operating them at in different locations simultaneously but staying in, in communication and, and using those maps to kind of direct our ROV operations. Oh, you can still see the red paint. That's so cool. Mm. That's the original paint. I was thinking it was as well, but it could also be kind of rusty. I mean, that looks like, like it red, looks like, red, though. It does, look, it does look like paint. It's interesting because <clears throat> the... The Udachi was the only other Japanese wreck that we surveyed on this expedition and the metal was really corroded and just this looks like a kind of completely different build if it indeed is a Japanese ship. Yeah, it's uh, it's really intact, yeah, compared to the Udachi we watched, yeah, another, another morning, yeah. 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 Uh, have we ID'd the, the wreck yet? I mean, we're thinking it's potentially an Akazuki class right. and potentially a Terazuki wreck, but we're not sure. Is there an, would there be an additional identifier that would say that it's the Terazuki of the Akazuki class? So probably the size of the, the shipwreck, uh, as well as position of, you know, turret yeah, and also torpedo tubes. Yeah, that would be good clue to identify uh, which class of destroyer we are looking at. We were learning earlier that Japanese vessels are typically come up with me. You're named first. after natural features or yeah. and the Terazuki, could you share what that means? So this class is after something Tsuki means moon. Yeah. This class itself probably called Akizuki class and yeah. It means a four autumn moon. Terazuki might be yeah, ir illuminate illuminated moon, shining moon. Moon? Hiroshi, would these classes of ship be carrying the chrysanthemum crest, or is that reserved for others? I'm not sure. This is this destroyer. It's kind of smaller cross. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Uh, yeah. It didn't carry. Yeah. Probably. I'm not sure. Yeah. But yeah. So currently working off of the uh, preliminary ID of this being Imperial Japanese Navy destroyer Terazuki, it would have been one of the newest ships in the Japanese Navy fleet. It had only been in action about three months at the time of its sinking. This ship, although it was new, had an extensive history in the Solomon Islands campaign here, fighting in both the first and second naval battles of Guadalcanal. 
Do you know that it torpedoed multiple U.S. ships, including USS Laffey? However, the night Terazuki was sunk, it was not on a combat mission, it was on a supply mission, bringing critically needed food and supplies to the Japanese army on Guadalcanal. So Terazuki was escorting this convoy on the night of December 11th when it was confronted by American PT boats. Terazuki took two torpedoes to the stern, which is one of the pieces of kind of evidence that we're looking for. Can we do a quick zoom? As we're looking yeah. to, to confirm this ID. So for those who are just joining, we're looking at the collapsed bow right now. So the bow is kind of collapsed and flattened and leaning towards the port side. Yeah, just like last time. Could you guys call out big hazards, if you don't mind, please? Seeing those valves is really incredible. You know, these this, it can sometimes be so hard to detect the scale, and then you see something that's extremely human inside. Can you hear my voice? Yes, we can. My name is Jun Kimura, uh, offshore scientist from Japan. Thank you for all the crew on board, and this is just amazing. Um, uh, uh, what you're doing in uh, Bijou de Fave, uh, the remains of the Kotsu uh, Teruzuki. Teruzuki is Akatsuki type destroyers that was built in Mitsubishi shipyard in Nagasaki. One of the things we want to understand is, of course, um, the uh, site formation process of um, the wrecking event and the state of the uh, the damage, um, the how ship was um, sunk, of course, it's fully recorded in a historical um, document. And also, um, um, based on what uh, we are watching, it would be important how long this uh, ship remained going to be um, survive uh, physically. Um, it's a global um, concern now, a number of uh, World War II sunk uh, warships in danger condition of the collapse and things. What we are watching is the uh, midship of uh, Teru, possibly um, Teruzuki and um, uh, exposed to how uh, um, uh, substantially uh, damaged. And so the, the information is um, very important uh, for us, um, for our therapists, um, to think about um, the, um, how long uh, a ship is going to be survived. And, Yes, um, this year is um, 80 years um, anniversary of the end of World War II. So um, all these visualized information uh, will be uh, disseminated to um, Japanese societies. A number of uh, people uh, will, be in, in, will be interested in, in the state or current state of these Hanku worship. Thank you. Do we think that this is potentially the stern? We were on transit to uh, target 44, and then we came across this debris field. And this uh, is the well, stern like... from the wreck we were looking at, Terazuki. Just so you found the stern, another piece. Yeah. Oh, wow. Just remember, it's not going to say yeah, Terazuki. Okay. It's going to be in Japanese right. characters. So. Is it? We did find the, the name on Akagi. These characters were blacked out, though. Remember, Frank? So, yeah. Shielding them. Very good. Very good. Battle recognition. I do remember that, uh, Phil. And that was intentional? Yeah. 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 More depth charges inside there. That's amazing. Yeah, so, so the... I, I was going to ask if they only had depth set charges on one side, which would be cr crazy, but clearly they had them on both, but they've collapsed in now. Remember, this particular class of destroyer was fitted more for anti-aircraft combat, so uh, the anti-submarine stuff looks more like just an addition. Yeah, yeah just a, a, yeah. an afterthought. Yeah. Following the discussion of our experts on shore, it shows the power of this kind of exploration yeah. because yeah. I guess there was some debate about whether the stern was gone because the depth charges explode or whether the stern fell off before. And yeah. I think this is. This has clearly resolved that question for them, seeing the depth charges there. The stern obviously yeah, broke apart, either in sinking or yeah. from Check some other, the from the torpedo attack. Take a look there. Yeah. Also, clearly the depth charges were put on safe, I guess. Uh, there we go. Yeah, although uh, Chuck Hammerline, who's provided us a wealth of information, 
uh, sent me a note saying, you know, please be extra careful that some Japanese ordnance in this time of the war uh, had a reputation for being overly Agreed. sensitive. Very so stable, yeah. yeah. Which I'm sure 80 something years on the bottom of the ocean hasn't exactly uh, <laughs> improved much. We'll get, we'll get all the way around and then have a better sense of what we're looking at. It. This would have been the area where the PT boat torpedo hit happen. Frank, we've talked a lot about the long lance torpedoes. What can you tell us about the type of torpedoes that were in PT boats? I believe it was the Mark 8 torpedo. PT boats were designed to kind of run in, a torpedo, fire their torpedoes. And because they're Check small, your it's a smaller boat, well too. Yeah, they're not quite as large, you gotta, but well, just as powerful when they, when they do explode. Cool. And do we get a size of this wreckage? The measure now for the size of the stern piece is about 18 meters in length. Mm -hmm. And it's 205 meters from the main wreck site. Just due east, basically. Due east. So with that, are we, are we officially confirmed that we found the uh, Japanese destroyer Terazuki then? Yes. We went through a process of elimination, looking at the features and the histories of the ships and ships of the class and what their dispositions were, and it's Terazuki.